Histograms display the shape of the distribution of continuous numeric data. The distribution can be symmetrical, right skewed, left skewed, unimodal or multimodal. Knowing the shape of the distribution helps us to decide which statistical test is appropriate. For example, if the distribution is symmetrical, we could use a t-test or linear regression. However, if the distribution is skewed, we'd need to use the Mann Whitney test or median regression. Moreover, when the data has several peaks, we might need to transform the data before analyzing it. Otherwise, when we calculate central tendencies, like the average, we will heavily misrepresent the reality. Histograms also help to identify outliers, which is very useful for cleaning the data. So, visualizing the distribution with histograms and density plots helps us to avoid these pitfalls. To create a histogram, we'll first load the Tidyverse meta package, which includes ggplot2 package. Additionally, we load the ISLR package to get the wage dataset containing information about American salaries. Next, we'll use the ggplot function with just two arguments, the data and aesthetics. The variable we want to visualize will be assigned to the x-axis. And finally, we'll add the geom histogram function to get the histogram itself. A histogram divides a numeric variable into multiple bars. The width of every bar covers a range of numeric values called a bin, while a bar's height indicates the number of data points within the corresponding bin. A warning message only informs us that 30 equal bins are used by default, but we can easily change the number of bins with a bin argument. The number of bins is important because having many bins allows us to see the precise distribution of the data. However, if there are too many bins, it can become challenging to distinguish the signal from the noise. On the other hand, with only a few bins, the histogram may lack the level of detail needed to discern any useful pattern or trend in the data. The only issue with the bin is that we don't precisely know the range of values it represents. That's why the bin width argument is much better. It allows us to specify the range of values within each bin. For example, if we set the wind bit to 50, we'll get 1702 values between 75 and 125. Since the purpose of the histogram is to help us understand whether the distribution is symmetric or skewed, adding central tendency lines such as the mean or median can be even more helpful. We can easily include a mean line by using the geom vline function with the x-intercept argument within the aesthetics. We can enhance the visual appeal of this plot by filling the bars with a blue color, outlining the bars in white and making the line more prominent by using a red color, increasing its size and using a dashed line type. Now we can clearly see that the distribution is skewed and the shapiro wilk normality test confirms that our wages are not normally distributed. Moreover, this histogram identifies a few outliers, which represent wealthy individuals which fall outside the main body of the salary distribution. So, histograms can serve as data traffic lights, signaling when it's time to stop and take a closer look. And while any measure of central tendency, whether it's the mean or median, is indeed useful, what enhances our understanding even further is the addition of more vertical lines to display standard deviations or quantiles. These lines help us to visualize where the majority of the data falls within the distribution. To achieve this, we begin by calculating the standard deviation as approximately 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation from the mean and about 95% of the data falls within two standard deviations. Additionally, we can calculate the 25th and the 75th percentile to depict the interquartile range, which encompasses the middle 50% of the salary values. Moreover, 
we can consider more extreme percentiles to identify where 95% of the salaries are located. Afterward, we can utilize these values to draw four vertical lines, enhancing the descriptive power of our distribution. And of course, it's sometimes beneficial to annotate these lines. To do this, we'll employ the geom label command with specified x and y coordinates to precisely position the annotation box. Additionally, we'll utilize the label argument, which allows us to include both plain text and any of the calculated values. But that was just the beginning. Histograms also enable us to compare the distributions of several groups. We can display them either on the same plot using the fill argument, which fills the bars with different colors, or on different subplots using facet wrap or facet grid functions, or even use both. But we can take it one step further by adding a density curve to the plot. Density plots are smooth curves that represent the distribution of the data similar to histograms. They provide a more accurate way to visualize the distribution and are less sensitive to outliers compared to histograms. To create a density plot in ggplot2, we first need to plot the histograms in terms of relative frequency rather than absolute frequency. Absolute frequency counts the natural occurrences in each bin, while relative frequency represents the proportion of occurrences in each bin. We can achieve this by using the afterstat function to calculate proportions. By dividing the counts in each bin by the sum of all counts, we obtain the height of each bar, which represents the proportion or percentage of values within that bin. We can use the geom density function to fit a density curve on top of the histogram because the density curve is already expressed in proportions or percentages by default. If necessary, we can also display the percentages in the middle of our bars using the stat bin function and the position argument. The scale y continuous function allows us to label the y axis with percentages, for example, 40% instead of 0.4. Finally, we can enhance the appearance of our plot by dividing our data into multiple groups, utilizing the lapse function to specify titles, captions, and access labels, and employing the theme function to adjust the legend placement and format the text on the plot. So, I hope you now see that displaying data in the form of histograms, density curves, and central tendencies is a useful tool for making decisions. For example, we can test our mean in blue against the mean of other people in red using a one sample t-test to determine if our result significantly differs. However, one sample t-tests open a completely new chapter and you can explore all the intricacies right here in this video.